Now I'm going to be tying a very basic caddis pupa. Now what I've done here is as well, I've actually, I've got a natural coloured seal spur, but I've mixed it with wool, makes it easier to dub, and obviously makes it, spreads a, I mean a packet of seals for, you're best to mix it in it with something, and it's, you can easily mix other fibres in with it and get more use out of it, it lasts far longer. The other thing you can do, like for the thorax, I've got again the seals for, but this time I've mixed a nice a tan ice dub into it, and you can see it just to highlight the thorax area. Now, it's easy, very easy to tie this fly. Now, the hook I'm using, this, you can use a curved hook, or you can use a, a short shank special, size 12. The shank's equivalent to a 14, it's the gape that's equivalent to a size 12. It's a very versatile hook and it's a medium wire hook so it's very good for like it's, uh, close to the surface mid water you can control the depth and this is a the pupa I'm tying is suited for it's basically mid to top and you can fish it you can control the depth of it with the fly that you're using with another fly like a bead uh, a tungsten bead or something like that now the thread I'm using this is a, a rusty brown I'm going to use this obviously tie the fly but as well I'm going to use it as a rib so what I do, I wax the thread take a length like make sure you've got a good length of the waist just catch it the eye and come down maybe four or five turns and then just bring the thread along beside the waist and form a loop so you then come into three strands so you've got a good so well the three strands will give you a decent uh, rib for the fly so what we're going to do now is to come down round the bend slightly and then we're going to come back up and we're going to stop the thread in line with the point of the hook so when we let the thread go it should be in line with the point we get my light coloured dubbing in this case the dubbing the seal spur I'm using here is this one it's called double decker it's a lovely nice natural colour uh, it's, it's got that creamy yellow as I like it the, the wool I'm using is just a basic yellow wool and what I do is I cut the lens and I just break it up and mix it into the the, the seals fur and it, it binds and it ties in really well you'll find it easy to dub so basically then what we do is put dubbing onto our thread and I'm just food, putting a good bunch you know, it's, a, it's quite loose obviously but what we're going to do is use that as a ball of wool as I would say and then we're just going to feed it onto the body stretch out when we need to and we can basically lighten it and thicken it to suit ourselves and twist it and tighten it up and that got a nice shape in the caddis body don't be shy the caddis body is quite heavy it's not like a pupa hey, sorry like a midge or anything like that so so when we get to this point we just back up in line with the pointed hoop they can take away what we don't use just add that back into the pile leave what's quite loose there I've got a rogue fibre I think, a black fibre here, I'm just going to nick it out then we bring the rib up, now uh, the thread is waxed but I'm going to run the wax through it a couple of times and then I'm going to twist it, usually rope it up then a straight turn at the back and then nice and tight we wind up ribbing the body a good half dozen times or so get to the top here we just draw back any fibres going forward just throw them back before we bring up this last turn uh, catch in with the thread make sure it's secure stroke back these fine fibres which is ideal for a caddis type or a body we can encourage that by just using the velcro just brushing the back any fibres that's too long we can then move these we can either pull them out or trim them away and as you see that nice blend of the, the wool and uh, the seals fur works really well now it is a synthetic wool this, this is not a this is just a synthetic fibre I use sometimes in Cardis. It blends, it's nice, you can use natural wool if you wish. Now I'm going to wind a hackle on. This is just a nice dark brown, it's just an Indian neck. 
you can use whatever, a hen or a cock, this is a cock hackle. But because it's a cheap, it's just a normal Chinese chicken as we would say. We get this kind of henny cock type fibre which is soft as well as stiff so we get a nice mix. So obviously clear the fibres away at the base, leave enough to tie it in at the stem and then we can wind. Now this will represent, or will represent legs but it will represent the, the case of the caddis opening out. So then, and the wing buds, the wing buds are always darker. Once we've got enough turns we just stroke it back and don't be shy with the length, the arm just basically bring it along the side of the body, make sure it's tied in, wax my thread. There we are. The one of the things I like doing if you've got it, you don't have to put this on. I've got some pre knotted pheasant tail legs here. Now, these are quite light in colour as it's pheasant tail. Uh, you could put, I'm just going to put uh, two either side of the body, so I'm just going to bring out some of the fibres, like that, tear away, and then what I'm going to do is offer them down either side, and just obviously slightly by the bend of the hook, because the legs and caddis are long, so we just tie these on, trim that away, Make sure that's secure, and then I'm going to tie in horns, and this is bronze mallard fibres. Just bring them out straight again from the stem, you'll see them lining up, tear them off. I like to see them nice and dark, so you can see them. Length, just check the length, you want to be able to see these as well, well by the bend. Oops, just pinch and loop them on the top. Just pulled that in, just check the length. Pull it in a wee bit. When you're happy, what I like to do is come down, fold them back. I don't worry too much about building up the thorax because I'll be I like a good thorax, there's well you want a good thorax. Uh and your caddis. But what I've done here as you can see I've taken the thread back towards the eye. We've got our mix of seals for and we're Ice dub. Again, this helps to bind it together. Slide it up. Now we're going to work from this point up towards our hackle. This way I like to form the thorax and a lot of my flies. I find it easier to get a shape. And as well, it helps to tie in because when you bring your thread back through, you can basically ribbon the fly. Check how much there is. That's fine, that'll do it. Uh, bring out some of these fibres. I may put a wee touch more on. It's quite easy to basically put some dubbing back on your thread. Just go back, do three turns so that the bigger I was up the top here, so I'm just going to bring in some more dubbing. You like a good thorax on these. And as I say, bring it through. Stroke back the fibres. Bring a thread to the, the eye. Just build up your head a wee bit. We check that's a wee bit better. Now you can bring some of these fibres out, you can just tap them with your velcro. And just roll your fingers through it, drawing them back, mixing them towards your dress. Uh, and then for speed, basically the quickest way to get a good varnished head and strong head is to quick finish with a tiny bit of varnish on the thread. Trim away your thread. Got one fibre as I always do. Just ping it off with a pair of tweezers. There we go. Very simple. Nice wee caddis pattern. You can, as I say, you can leave the legs up to yourself. You can see it does add to the attraction of the, the pupa. Now you could add the horns further up, but I always like them at the back. 
because it allows me to, if I want, when I'm on the water, I just use the Velcro on my jacket, and uh, just to lift out some of the fibres, because this will, if you bring out, more fibre you bring out, the more you'll be able to lift it up or keep it higher in the water, and there is times where you need the caddis pupa really high, and again, you can control the depth, I like to piggyback, say a nymph like this, off a dry, and then target then the rough water, uh, that's where the caddis pupa seem to go, you, you get a lot in there, and the fish will wait for them, so, just as they come off the rough water, they just, the fish, they come onto these type of palms. And you see it's rough and ready, that's what it should be. A carriage pupa should be like similar to this, ready to go. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that time. And again, if you enjoy the videos, uh, please subscribe, it does help. And thank you for watching.